Woo! What is up, YouTube? My Cowboys family here bringing you guys the latest update on our very own Dallas Cowboys. And, of course, as always, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the Fanliest of Fridays. Hell yeah. Finally made it for one, right? <laughs> yeah, so hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. Like I said, follow us anywhere and everywhere. Hop in the Discord links down below. There's some people we have to shout out, though, before we hop into this Fan oh, Friday. yeah, you know it. The people that run this show here on MCF on the nightly here. And we're going to shout out today, of course, on a Fan Friday. It's not just, a, not just that top shelf star and over everything. It's also mm-hmm. the silver level, too. we got the navy blue. we got all of you subscribers in the house, whoever's here watching, chilling with us. we got to give a big shout out to Deadpool, who's taking over. Here on MCF. he's He hangs on MCF after dark. He is our sponsor of the week. And the Cash App King. Extra special love to Dead Fool here on a Fan Friday. That's Family right. so Friday here on MCF. Much love, of course, to the man Marco Sepian, the all-time record holder. As our sponsor of the week streak maker here. What does he have? 15 in a row is his all-time record. But right now he's repping 41 points on the stream boss. He's hanging on. He's hanging on to that stream, boss. When you look at the gifting, membership gifting champion, no, look no further than Jason Renfro, Ooh. who dropped three last week and was enough to get that crown. So much love to him. This week, there's not one gifted membership yet. We're on a fan Friday. No gifted membership. So right now, that board is wide open. When you look at the cash app side and the overall board, well, there's only one guy's taking over right now, and it's the man you know. You got much love to the man McLovin. Thank you, McLovin. Yes, Appreciate the reason, you, of course. Reason I'm shouting out McLovin here on both boards here, Cash App and the the uh, the overall board is because we had some a little. You know, we were off yesterday, but we were a little having a little bit of partying fun there on after MCF after dark, and we had some drops from some people. I got to shout them out right now. Snug X, Sco nine seven one in the house. Harley Dad up there on the top of the list. Grateful Nomad also, I think third on the overall board. Gloria, Gloria. Over there dropping some love, and so is Marissa, Sparkle, and Smokey, Smoke Dog here. So appreciate you guys dropping the love, but the guy who dropped also dropped love and took over, not just on that monthly leaderboard, but on this weekly leaderboard in the cash app and the overall board, it's the man McLovin, who also dropped some love last night. Appreciate you, appreciate all you guys who dropped the love on the After Dark and the MCF, My Cowboys Family okay. uh, shows, and you get represented on this board no matter what. And remember... A little different now when it comes to the weekly winners and the bonuses, you, extra perks for being a weekly winner here, uh, sponsor week, for example. So let me let me continue by saying, big shout out to those that dropped the love here tonight. First off, in the in the membership in the Navy Blue crew, much love the Big D, place to be. He's back in the Navy Blue. Appreciate you. And then drop him if you got him. Yeah, drop him if you got him, Big D. And you also got Skeptical Fan dropping the pre-stream two dollar holler. What did the man say, Mr. Skeptical Fan? He said, make the Cowboys Super Bowl champs again, 2024. And I can't agree more. Appreciate that. And then Dwayne Broussard, the top dog, dropping that Dak drop. $4 holler with a go Cowboys. You know how that goes. Appreciate both you guys. You know, some some of the uh, top shelf members here. As we talk about different levels of membership, Navy Blue Silver starring over everything. There's a lot of ways to drop the love here, like the Super Chat you just saw. There's a thanks button. You could jump in the membership like Big D. You can gift memberships. The way Jason Renfro has won it last week with three gifted memberships. There's four of the ways you can not just attack the overall board, but you also attack the cash app side of things. What are those four ways, baby? You guys already know there's the Cash App, of course, Money Sign My Cowboys Family. World famous Cash App. The Venmo yeah. at My Dash Cowboys Dash Family. The regular PayPal link. And of course, last but not least, the Streamlabs link. Let your comment show up on screen just That's like right. a Super Chat. That's right. And anybody, if you don't know, you guys, you're going to know tonight that if you're in that star level and over everything level, either of those two levels here in our membership side of things, you are entered into our monthly jersey raffle, which will be at the end of March. And if this month, not just starring over everything, but the weekly winners, like I said, we had Jeremy Bramlett win it one week. We had, of course, here, Deadpool win it in another week. Mm-hmm. So they're getting a bonus entry, a raffle entry here. For, you know, and, and again, if one of the, if, let's say McLovin wins this week and he gets in it, and hey, McLovin wins the ne- another week, he gets two raffle entries, right? So that's, that's the way right. that goes. Star level gets one entry, and the over everything level, which right now is the man Seabass, he gets two entries as well. So ups your chances to win one of these great sewn inch stitched jerseys, Cowboy Mosh style. You know, authentic like. We got old school players and Hall of Famers and classic 
legendary players in the styles of the time and also newer players that you have right now. Currently on our Cowboys, you get them in all different styles, sizes, men, women, children, you know how it goes. So great stuff, a lot of choices. And that uh, that raffle's going down next week. So get in the membership, but specifically the star level membership or the over everything level membership or, hey, win one of the sponsor of the week boards here. And you guys get yourself in this raffle. We'll That's see what right. happens. Can't wait. But now let's do them shout outs. And you know, tonight different kind of kind of shout out because it's not just that star level and the over everything level that gets the big shout outs it's also that silver level too silver level gets one of the perks outside of other perks we have raffles and other like other outside raffles like from the lunatic and others you you got a a lot of different uh level you know membership level entries in there but this one of the star level member member entries is the nightly shout uh, is the fan friday shout outs every fan friday they get a shout out so baby before we even get going let's flow with the star level with, let's start with silver go into star and then the over everything thank you very much prince jackson mr a lovell 44 going to forward 45 months of domination there when it comes to the total time as a member that's right along with marissa sparkle mary alvarez skeptical fan Dwayne broussard the lunatic andy potched jason renfro LC and of course over everything. C Bass. C Bass in the house. Who, by the way, at the end of the month, along with this raffle, he will be speaking here with us and giving his two cents on this how this free agency has been looking for our Cowboys. His views on our free agency. I can guarantee you it ain't gonna be nice. <laughs> his thoughts on this, and I'm I'm here for it. So much love to C Bass and everybody else on all these different levels. Now it's time to level up everybody in the house tonight and, and, and shout them out. Who's here for some news, info, and updates on our Cowboys? Yeah, we have Scorpio representing. Nice to see you here. Hopefully you're feeling better. Yep. Rolando Rodriguez all the way from South Texas. Stephen White in the house. Much love. The man himself, C. Bass. C. Bass. And hey, all good. Uh, I'll have uh, Mr. MCF uh, drop the uh, membership link in the chat. So, because I, I'm not actually sure how you gift memberships. I can't quite remember now that I think about it, so I think if you just if you are you have to be in the membership. Well, you have, yeah, yeah, you have to be. Yeah, if you're, if you're yeah, of course. Oh, I don't know if he was the one asking, but yeah, if you're in the membership, you hit the little dollar sign, the little thing at the bottom, instead of super chat. I think you're gonna get gift membership, right? Isn't there a gift membership option? Mm, no? I mean, it doesn't show up for me at least. Oh. So, but you know, well, let me let me check. Let me see. Let's see. Da, da, da. Doesn't do that? Yeah, no. Let me huh. see more. Yeah, no. I don't know. How does everybody else do it? Yeah, that's a good question because I don't know why that's not doing that now. Huh. I remember I used to do it, I used to jump in there and I used to let you get gift memberships that way. But let me know if you guys cannot do it for whatever the reason is. Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna check on that. Yeah, that is really weird. So hmm. uh, anyway, let me keep rolling with the shout outs as we kinda I guess behind the scenes look into that. Thank you for giving us that little uh Yeah, I'm, I'm checking on it right now. Help there, Mr. C Bass. Yeah, skeptical fan. Let us know how you do it, right? <laughs> Dwayne Brissard, the top dog himself. Much love. We have Victor Hill. Hello and hi. Always Dallas Cowboys for life. Ren and Jay, hello and hi, what's up? Mad Man representing here. We have who else? Esmodius, much love to you. Let me see who else is in here. Daniel Berry Sports, what's up? Hello and hi. Even you, Lee Side. I guess you're here to talk <laughs> real football, right? Well, if it's cowboy football. <laughs> Spoony Dog, what's up? Much love. Uh, it actually won't let me go too far back because I refreshed oh. my stream oh. on my side. I know. Uh, to I, try I, can, and... I know. I can't do it because I I don't have. A, I don't, I'm not in the membership. Well, that's... that makes sense for you. Yeah, but for you, you should have that. That's weird, huh? Uh, let me see. You should be able to gift though. Love, no. Oh, I mean, do you want to maybe? Hmm? I guess we'll just uh, sit here and listen to us silently look at things behind us. All right, well, I guess you did that. Go Cowboys. I did. I was just checking. I don't know why. That, that's really strange. Anyway, I apologize. Yeah, Jason Renfro is our last winner, so maybe he can let us know how he gifted memberships. So, because it never was a problem before. I know. But it was always up there as an option. That's yeah, strange. it only gives me those two options. That hmm. is really weird. Hmm. So. That's changed up. Anyways, we'll check into that. It still says we're active for that, so there's no yeah, reason why it should not be has, available. Yeah. 
So in either way, guys, let's get rolling. As you, I guess, oh, I don't know if yeah, you're going to look into that or not. That's the shout outs I have here. Yeah. Lost no, in I, translation. Yeah. What's up? Much love. Yeah, I just didn't know if, if you were going to check, if you were able to check into I that. I can't but, go any okay. back any farther. And okay, no, no, I don't I'll know if you try to were, check into it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I okay, don't we'll, know. we'll, we'll, we'll oh, there it is. Scorpio just gifted membership. So Scorpio, let us know how you did it. Who got that gifted membership? We're about Lost to find in out. translation. <laughs> Thank you, Scorpio. Appreciate you, brother. Congrats, Lost in Translation. Much love. He's back Thanks. in the membership of the Navy Blue Crew. But more importantly, please, Scorpio, let us know how you did that. I just, I'm just you know, write it out there for us and let us know how, how, how you did it because I didn't see and the option for us. I guess let us know us. if you're on an iPhone because huh. I know usually half, I feel like half the time the answer is, oh, you're on an iPhone. It's uh-huh. like, Thanks. Wonderful. He said it's in the Super Chat area. All right. Huh. So I hit it here. Can you move it? Maybe move no. it up. Scroll it up. No. That's all I guess. Huh? Let me see sticker. Are you in the membership? <laughs> I I am definitely I'm in the are. membership. So yeah, I don't know. It's not. It only lets me do super chats. Huh? So. Oh, well, I guess only certain people are allowed to do that. I don't know. Well, you yeah, can't. so everyone's saying it's in there. Just scroll down, but there's nowhere huh. to scroll. Well, here's the interesting thing about that little test drop oh, there, which counts. Weird. Thank you, Skeptical. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. Well, Scorpio, no. Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah, Scorpio, yeah. Scorpio, Scorpio with the drop. He is currently the leader on the gifting board. Oh, he did say he's on PC. So, yeah. Ah, so it has probably, to go through a PC. Probably an iPhone situation hmm. once more. Fuck iPhones. Or just, or just something you need to just oh, be. Oh, whoops. We're kind of... A little early for the adult language. Maybe. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. We're good. But yeah, we're good. We're waiting to this thing already. We've just been checking this out for five minutes. So sorry about that. As we're 14 minutes into the stream, that should be safety zone for us. And uh, if you get anything more, let me let me know how that works, if it works for anybody else. Oh, and there we go. Skeptical fan gifting the Mr. Juan Carlos back in the membership. Much love to Skeptical Fan. What did the man say? Oh, well, I guess we know what he said. He said, here's a gift of membership. And go Cowboys. Hell yeah, which means he Thank just... Thank you, Skeptical. Ooh, now he's in a tie. He's not going to let Scorpio take that. He's in a tie for that first place, for the first place spot on the membership gifting side of things. Hmm. So I'm going to get into the NFL news in a minute. Let me just fix the board and maybe hit up another comment or it's two. Skeptical or Fan thought. said, get an Android. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so an it's... Android or a PC, it works, but not on iPhones. Wow. Well, good to That's know. Some so, crazy shit right Matt there. Batten, what's up? Hello and hi. Much Matt. love. Matt in the house. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Revelation journalist. Oh. Shout out to you. Oh, there we Skeptical go. Skeptical fan, fan once said, again. Who's got it this time? Matt Batten. Congrats to hey. you. Appreciate you. He gets to drop some of those emojis. Drop them if you got them. You know what I mean? So, hey, right there, that puts Skeptical Fan right behind Mary Alvarez into ninth place on the overall board. And more importantly, I guess you can say, he is now in first place all by himself over Scorpio with two gifted memberships on our gifting membership board. Shout out to you. So, yes. Scorpio, by the way, said, I love Android. So, <laughs> lots <laughs> no of translations said, Oh, uh, wait, is this another one? Is another one by a Mr. Yes, Skeptical? it is. Skeptical fan said, hold up, wait go. a minute. I got to keep showing the love. Congrats to hey. Chalk Tom Montana 808, who's the, he's in the membership. latest lucky membership Hell yeah. winner. And Skeptical with that drop right there. One behind Gloria. into seven. He's, a, he's in eighth place, one behind Gloria. Uh, for seventh place right now, Skeptical just moving on up to the east side. I think he's our number. Well, obviously we have some uh, some people from the other from from our, that cross between After Dark and here. But outside of you know Marissa Sparkle and the membership, Skeptical is the second you know second family member here from this side of things yeah, here he just on said, the board. I'm just making sure everything is working. So thankfully, thank you, thank you for that, yes. Skeptical. Like I said, I genuinely did not realize or know that the iPhone didn't even give you that option. Huh. So that sucks. Good to know. It sucks if you're because if I'm a member in some other places, now it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a member if you have a freaking iPhone if you can't gift. You know, it just sucks. A little bit sucks. Definitely sucks. But it's all right. That uh, never stops. It took us, us this before. long for us to figure that out. I, you know, we probably should have, <laughs> I guess, maybe known that, but sooner. Hey. Well, either way, appreciate you. It's uh, it, was that three right total? 
I think he gave yeah. three back. Yes, it is. So, But the thing I don't get lost in translation, again, it lets you do super chats and the super stickers. So what's the difference between that and a membership? Well, it's weird. Gifting a membership, right? Specifically so. gifting it. So oh. it is what it is. You know how that goes. But now let's talk some Dallas Cowboy football. What do you say? Uh, well, how about some... This is Dallas Cowboy well, relative. Cowboy, Cowboy Jason. Very Cowboy much Jason. So. We are, unfortunately, like I said, we're definitely in that uh, NFL offseason era where every bit of anything ends up somehow being Cowboy and adjacent. Remember, guys, this is a Cowboy quickie. So it is going to be extremely a quick stream. Already, we just delayed it like 10 minutes just by doing that whole gifting thing. But it's good that we figured it out and now we know the answers better. Thank you. Marco Sepian down to 40 points on the stream boss. So... This affects every team in the NFL, including the Cowboys. Possible rule changes. Mm. Yesterday, there was a conference call before the before this NFL annual meeting, which is in Orlando, Florida. The competition committee chairman, Rich McKay, says of the attempts to ban the hip drop tackle, quote, mm-hmm. it's a quote from him, we tried to draft it very specifically and we were quick to say it's hard to see all the elements yet. So the number one thing is to get the technique out of the game. They just want to make sure they force the, the the movement, basically a natural movement of like dropping your 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 like basically letting yourself hang in the air on the player while you're falling on his ankle, even if it's not done on purpose. You got it has to be kind of phased out of the way you tackle in football. So that's what they're trying to do. Now that's the, of course these things are going to be voted on next week. Keep this in mind. We will know if there's anything. It's going to be a trial run, maybe just preseason, maybe just postseason, or maybe, maybe all season, like right? Or maybe other, not at all. <laughs> well, no, maybe it's going to be like some of those other rules where they'll implement it for a year, reevaluate, and then kind of go from there. We've seen that quite a few times. Yeah, yeah so keep that in mind. I, I, I suspect that the hip drop is, is something they're definitely trying to take out of the game, which is fine. On the kickoff rule, which John Fossil Bones had a lot of input in this, on the kickoff situation, the the chairman, the com, uh, competition chairman committee, committee chairman Rich McKay said, "quote We just have not been able to make it safely, but we've made it a non-event as well. Now we've taken too much out of the game. It's too exciting of a play, meaning the kickoffs. We don't want to lose special teams. So again, they're hoping that the new rule will bring it back. Keep that in mind." Again, I, I think I said this the other day, but basically the, the kicking team, right? The kicker kicks off on his own like 30 or whatever, you know, like a normal kickoff, mm-hmm. zone 40. But his, his line does not start next to him. His line starts on the opponent's 40. So they're already like down the field. The, the opposing, the, the receiving team, they start on the 35. So they're like five yards apart. There's not any high impacts. Once the ball's kicked, it's already over their heads. Hmm. And then... There's, the ball must go into the twenty yard line, or you know, or farther back, right? It'll go deeper. It, it goes out of the end zone. It goes to the, I think, the twenty yard line. But if it, if you go out of bounds on the sideline, it goes to the forty. And if you don't make it to the twenty yard line, it also goes to the forty. So there's no onside kicks. It, you know, you, it, there's a much easier chance to return it, and there's not as much impact. That's what the studies have shown. That's what probably going to try to vote on. It's going to look a whole lot different if they implement this rule. And I'm kind of looking forward to it because it will make it more exciting. And Kevontae Turpin and others are used to this. So they know how to get through that, that quick barrage of players. And once you break through, he's gone. So it's going to be I'm interesting how this I'm looking forward to seeing change. it live in an action just to actually see yeah. what it actually ends up being like. Because right now, well, you know, especially I, I, what I'm trying to say is after such a boring ass season when it comes to that, like I, I'm just looking forward kickoffs, to maybe yeah. some excitement well, on kickoffs. I can tell you how to do it. Type in there, you know, USFL or XFL kickoffs. And you'll see how it works. It shows you. And it's pretty exciting because there's a lot of a lot of chances once you get past that first wave for guys to break big, you know, kickoff uh, touchdowns, right? So it's going to make it easier to return kickoffs if you get past that wave of, 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 of which are going to be right on top of you, though. So, you, you know, you got to be secure about catching the ball. And all that stuff is, you know, you have to catch the ball if it's inside the 20, I think, is where it comes down to. So it's forcing kickoffs to occur. To make it more exciting with less uh, injuries. And hey, I like you, know, it. you know, Bones is definitely excited just because, like you, you guys are saying here, apocalyptic, right? With the kickoff having more importance that makes special teams yep. and the people playing special teams that much more valuable. Yep. So definitely going to have a factor yeah, uh, that's, in hiring. Maybe that's why the Cowboys went out there and got Trent Zeke back and CJ Goodwin back. Look, what I'm trying to say is we have one of the best special coordinators, you know, special teams coaches, coordinators out there in, in Bones. 
And, you know, if it's not, if that becomes a bigger part of the game, then we have a slight advantage, advantage over other teams. We have one of the better coaches. By the way, Jeff Miller, who's the NFL kind of uh, medical guy, mm-hmm. clarifies the injury rate on hip drop tackles, by the way. Okay. It's 20 to 25% the rate of other tackles. The injury rate. So it's 20 to 25% more likely you're going to get a serious injury with a hip drop tackle than any other kind of tackle in the NFL. So just so you know there. Anyways, moving on to another change, maybe the trade deadline. Remember some teams wanted to change the trade deadline? Yeah. I'm being moved back an extra week or two. Quote, well, Rich McKay said, quote, it will be interesting to see the discussion for this. Some are strongly in favor and some are not. So that sounds like it's not going to pass. They need to get like 80% or something. That's not going to happen, guys. But the fear is that teams will dump players to increase their chances the following year. So not really sure. I don't really get what yeah. they mean by that. Well, I think, I think I mean, again, I'm not sure what, the, what how that's... Does, like, how does increasing a trade deadline make that happen, I guess, is my... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I guess if a team releases a player... Is better, it because it's going to happen going into like the next or later, yeah. year or something? Yeah, maybe or? the contracts will be shorter for those players now than it would have been if it was earlier in the year. You know, get more of a con. You know what I'm saying? So something to do with that. Either way, there's a lot of fear about about this from both sides of things. I don't see that going through. Now, what about the tush push? Is that going to be made illegal? NFL is going to leave the tush push as a legal play. For the 2024-2025 season. Okay. This is per the NFL. NFL executive Troy uh, Vincent said that today there will not be any proposal presented this offseason to ban it for next year. The Eagles, they do it well, he said. That's all. That's all it said about that. So. I mean, I have to admit, I don't, I never thought it should have necessarily been illegal. I think teams are just mad that. I couldn't stop. Yeah, well, that the Eagles executed it so well. We've seen other teams do it, and basically no one else managed to make it work. Not as consistently so, as, as well so as So what? Did. You're going to ban it just because someone's really good at it? Like, I don't like the Eagles any more than the next I person. I hate but saying that, too, but you're even right. And I admit, it, it seems awfully unfair they, to ban they, it just because they're good at it. They perfected a loophole in the game of football and they deserve credit for that and hey listen you, teams got to stop it that's it or mm-hmm. do it do it as good as they do it now player news free agents things going on in the NFL right now the lions mm-hmm. officially released cornerback cam sutton with a post june 1st designation another cornerback flo- floating around that allows any team out there to spread the dead money associated with his release over the last 2 years of his contract and that means also that the lions are picking up I'm sorry, yeah, the, the Lions are picking up $1.5 million in cap space because of the post-June 1st cut. But why did they cut a starting cornerback, the Lions? I'll tell you why. Police in Florida have been searching for Detroit Lions cornerback Cameron Sutton for oh, about boy. two weeks after an arrest warrant was issued over his alleged involvement in a domestic violence case. Wow, so, if they can't find him, mm, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to guess he's not... He's not playing football either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like... Cops, he hadn't been around for two weeks. They let him go today. As far as the Lions, they cut him, released him as a post June first cut. Now he's running from the running from the law right now. We'll see what transpires from that. But he's now a free agent, and no one's picking him up. Trust me. Please, nobody tell me out yeah, there. I can, Let's go get I can Cam see Sutton. Why. Yeah. Now uh, other moves. Cornerback C.J. Henderson, who's a pretty decent cornerback when he's not injured, which he's banged up a lot. East side Harold. I see him right there. He just said it. They picked up C.J. Her- Henderson mm-hmm. today. So a former top ten pick leaves Car- the Panthers after they got I think they, who they get the they got it from Jacksonville I think uh, went to the Carolina Panthers for I think he had three years there uh, C J Henderson then he went now to the Houston Texans they try to you just you know they, I'm not saying he's going to be great you know I say he's going to be on the field but when he's on the field he might be pretty good now some of these guys are going to be bust for the Texans but they're picking up a lot of people and just saying hey. Unlike the Cowboys, who have plan A, B, and C. I'm sorry, who don't have plan A, B. They just have plan A, and that's it. Texans at least go on plan A, B, C, like a lot of other teams out there are, are naturally doing. The Chiefs, okay, they're getting squeezed by the cap, as we knew they would a little yeah. bit here and there. They lost some players, but now they are finalizing a deal. This just happened like a couple hours ago. To send franchise-tagged cornerback Legereus Sneed to the Tennessee Titans. It's happening. It's official. So the Chiefs are expected to receive a 2025 third-round pick in addition to a seventh-round pick this season. So a seventh round, basically, a, you know, the last pick of the draft, mm-hmm. you know, for the, for the Tennessee Titans. 
And they are going to supposedly get a third rounder next year for for Legereus Sneed. And they're going to, I guess they think of the flip in the uh, seventh round pick this year, uh, both Tennessee and Kansas City. But Sneed, obviously, he's going to sign a new contract off of this, off of this uh, tag, right? So the trade is just pending for the physical, which Larry, once he passes that, it'll be official. So again, Legereus Sneed's Sneed has the framework of an agreement already done with Tennessee. Working on it for the last couple of days, it'll be, again, as he passes his physical, it'll be formalized once he does, once he passes the physical. It'll make him one of the highest paid cornerbacks in the NFL, in NFL history. And we'll hear what the deal is going to be very soon. So we know it's a, it's going to be, a, he's going to be basically, Jerry Sneed's going to be the, probably the top paid cornerback in the NFL, even over Tar- uh, Trayvon Diggs and others. So Titans, they got a corner. They got a replacement for him already for Legereus Need. You know, well, not not a replacement. They already they got somebody to go match with him in Tennessee. Legereus Need on one side. They got a former Cowboy, which they we knew already. They already got him. I already talked about it. Chidobe Chidobe Awuzie. Chidobe Awuzie. Yeah, was it the Bengals for a couple of years now? Signed by the Tennessee Titans for a nice little chunk. You know, little chunk chunk of money. So now they got two. Solid corners there. One really good one and one, I'd say, Cheeto is average. But they got two corners there in Tennessee to try to help them out there. Um, so Cheeto Bay on one side, Legere Sneed on the other. Um, and, again, they're going to be maybe better off now to face their division rivals with C.J. Stroud at the quarterback for the Texans, Trevor Lawrence from Jacksonville, Anthony Richardson from the Indianapolis Colts. So we'll see what happens. But once this trade is executed, that's Tennessee side. What about KC side? Legereus Sneed's departure to Tennessee frees up about $19.8 million against the Chiefs' salary cap. And that was why this move had to be made. Remember, he's on a tag for that much. The Chiefs are going to be fine, you know, with the salary cap juggling. But, of course, what do they do at cornerback, right? Honestly, if I was the Chiefs, I think I'd rather than get the seventh rounder and flip this year with the seventh rounder and get next year's third. I'd rather have Legereus Sneed on a tag. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the thing. Let's say he goes off. Let's say the tag, he plays on the tag one more year. Mm-hmm. And you don't trade him. And then he's a free agent. What do you get back, you think, when he signs his huge deal with Tennessee? What do you get back in comp pick? Third rounder. They're trading for an earlier third rounder. That's it. An earlier third rounder is what they would get with having Snead on, on their team. The only difference is it's $20 million for Jerry Snead. And they don't have the money. So... That's kind of the catch there, right? That's the way things have to work sometimes when you got quarterback money and other money invested into a team. Chris Jones' money yeah. invested into the Chiefs. So they'll be fine. But again, I would have rather kept Legereus if I could have on a tag one year and then get that third round pick anyways than flip the seventh and get a, a later, a, a 10 picks later third round pick. That makes no sense. But the Chiefs were in trouble financially. That was the reasoning for this here. They love Legereus' need. You know, Creed Humphrey, Nick Bolton, Trey Smith all have contra- contracts coming up soon with the Chiefs. So it is a business. Part of being a dynasty is that, you know, you, you have to draft a lot of young, talented players in the, you know, in the later rounds sometimes yeah. to be able to get enough guys to fill in these spots you're going to be missing. And that's what they're doing. So, again, you see, they're ha- but they're still winning Super Bowls <laughs> as they're replacing players and cycling players through. We, on the other hand, we're losing players. And again, I'm gonna bring him up one more time. I gotta bring him up one more time, baby. I thought we were through with the Tyron Smith, but Tyron Smith did speak yesterday. Okay. On signing with the Jets, he said this quote: "This is definitely a huge change for me. Everybody knows how the business goes. Sometimes you gotta leave. I just knew my main options were either gonna be staying in Dallas or going to New York to play for the Jets. For the way things were looking in Dallas, I knew it'd most likely be the Jets." Well, there you go. I got excited for a new chapter in my life. And, you know, he basically also said that his first time as a free agent was stressful. But the key here is, and I don't know if you heard this, baby, but he basically said, you know, I know he's going to be in Dallas or the Jets. But the way things were looking in Dallas, I knew it would be the Jets. That is that a is that a hit against the way that Jones has handled, handled things? Or, you know, was Tyron Smith saying that it didn't look like he was going to be able to get signed, you know, by the Cowboys, they didn't have interest. Maybe they just, you know, he knew that they were strapped with the cap situation, as the Cowboys always, yeah. front office always says. So, I don't know if it's a diss on Jerry and Stephen Jones. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past it. But I don't think it was a diss. I think it was more of a, hey, you know what? 
I saw the cap issues in Dallas. They weren't going to be able to afford me, so I knew it was going to be the Jets. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. What do you think, baby? I mean... Sounds a little bit hateful, a little hate I Well, no. Uh, it also, to me, just kind of partially sounds like what I personally had speculated when we heard a little bit more of the Tyron news. It sounds like the Cowboys didn't even offer him anything. Mm. I told you, it sounds like the Cowboys basically said either you play on, like, the veteran minimum contract or you're good, (laughs) you know, just because, again, it sounds like he was waiting to hear what the Cowboys were going to offer him and were going to say. Yeah, and he saw it, he's like, I'm out of here. I'm just saying, it it doesn't even sound like to me like they ever made him an offer to actually stay. Mm. Gotcha. So... Obviously tra- hard to interpret completely off of his statement. Right. The, uh, the other kind of interesting it. part is that, you know, retirement doesn't even sound like it was an option for nope. Tyron Smith. So he obviously feels like he's got a lot more left yeah. to give. And he, if, again, if managed properly the way McCarthy managed him, he does have a lot to give. He'd still be a fantastic player. And he'll get you probably 12 games in there, 13 games, and it only costs you $12 million, $13 million. Yeah. But... They also asked him, was he surprised? Tyron Smith, were you surprised that the Cowboys didn't make a stronger effort to keep you? And he said, quote, no. Oh. After being in this game for a long time, I just know that it's the way the business goes. Sometimes you keep guys. Sometimes you can't. Some guys got to move on. I'm not surprised at all. You just got to take it for what it, what it's worth, and you end up where you need to be. End quote. Now, what do you think? I mean, about honestly, that? I like I said, he obviously. I, I'm, if anything, that statement right there does back up, and, and I feel like validates what I just said. It does not sound like we made him an offer. Again, it also sounds like he's not necessarily personally bothered by it, but you know, I know this is the way that the business goes. So to speak, but yeah, I I don't know, man. Wow, Tyron Smith is a definitely a better man than I am, because uh, I would hold hmm. that against the Cowboys forever for a while. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, just saying. What's the chat saying? Matt Batten said Tyron Smith knows the Joneses are going to do nothing in free agency this season, so he left, and it's sad. Hmm. Lawson translation said they wanted him to play for thirty eight dollars. Exactly. Basically. So, Mike Aldana said, sounds like sour grapes on his chances to stay in Dallas. So, but, mm-hmm. I mean, both that's ways. what I'm saying. Like, I admire none, nothing about that. Any of those statements sounded like sour grapes to me. They sounded very matter of fact. Hmm. Um, hmm. Well, he knows the way the business is with the Cowboys, it seems to me. Like, it seems like he knows the way the Cowboys do business also, with other guys' contracts the last five, six, eight years. I'm right? also throwing this out there, too. We don't know what the discussions were like last year uh, between Tyron Smith and our front office when we, you know, just generally have our usual chats uh, and discussions and things like that. So, obviously, whenever the last time we sat down with Tyron was, you know, it, I, that's what I know, but it sounds like, oh, no, because we restructured yeah, his contract yeah, but, pretty but, much but, every but year to talk to him and all for that. that though. No, but we still generally, obviously, he talks to his agent. So we touch they base, talk to the agent or whatever. But... The point is that whatever moves the Cowboys were making, the writing was clearly on the wall a bit there. Yeah. So, and of course, Tyron Smith has been in Dallas pretty much the longest of anybody here currently right now. So, no one more than Tyron Smith would know just how the Joneses handle their business. Exactly. That's my point. He knows the most of anybody on this team currently. How the Joneses do play the salary cap pie game. I love that. Tom, Thomas Garrett said, plus, Tyron Smith knows where the dead bodies are buried in <laughs> Dallas, too. So That's true. Scorpio said, we were so close to a Super Bowl. Yeah. Now it's like we're taking, taking steps back away from the playoffs. Feels like it. And I got, hey, by the way, I, I, and again, I, I it, the Cowboys have too many holes to fill to get this team to be, you know, at least breaking even when we were last year. Right now, we're, we're the only thing we've improved on is linebacker. Now, that's it. Dustin that's it. Roberts Zero. said, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but if Tyron Smith plays like he did last year, couldn't we possibly get a third or a fourth round pick?" Now, again, a fourth for if like he does. No, that's the thing. I I think right now the lowest we're getting for him is a fifth rounder. Okay. And right now he's falling with the contract because it only counts it as twelve million dollars. Because that's the most real. I think the way the NFL Player Association does it is what's realistic. They go off of last year's, and that's what hits the cap. So 
it's actually costing on the cap about twelve to thirteen million dollars. Um, what was it? What was the? Um, that was a good question. But um, that doesn't he? Well, sorry, no, let me go back. I got you. Where'd it go? Oh, Dustin Smith. There we go. Um, does, don't we get a third or fourth round comp? Pick? That's the thing. It's right now. It's sitting at a fifth. If he plays well. Right now, it's sitting at a fifth. If he plays well and he plays, you know, if he plays more than thirteen games, we'll probably get a fourth. And if he plays the whole season, he'll probably we'll, we'll get a third. If he plays that well and he hits twenty, he gets close to that twenty million. That's possibly a third rounder. It, it could be a fourth rounder. I'm looking at the realistic number is a fifth rounder. I'm being honest, but fifth rounder, maybe a fourth rounder. That's that's that. That's what the Cowboys get out of Tyron Smith's ten a decade worth of playing with the Cowboys. Rep you have time. to imagine that was also possibly a factor in their business decision. Hey. Let's mm. move on from Tyron, you know, while we can maybe get, you know, some kind of comp, some kind of something back. Typical for it, right? Dallas Cowboy bullshit. That's Stephen Jones loving those comp picks a little mm. too much, a little too much. And yeah, it's uh, like I said. You no, know, these comp picks are at the end of the rounds. Remember that. <laughs> but yeah, no, you can't fully quite call this year a rebuild year because again, you know, signing a receiver. You know, signing Micah or making a move. You know, like making all these types of moves that you anticipate the Cowboys are going to make. Not quite rebuild, right? But if those are the only moves we make, it leaves us in this weird in-between spot where we're not even rebuilding. We're not really progressing. We're just kind of here. (laughs) Anyway, sorry. By the way, big shout out to Skeptical Fan. He dropped this about... About tw- about thirty minutes, uh, twenty minutes ago, thirty minutes ago, he dropped a four dollar and twenty five cent holler in the PayPal side. Skip. So he just jumped over Gloria. He's seventh place on the overall board. But you know what he said? What did he say? Android phones are superior. To, End quote. I don't necessarily <laughs> disagree there. Skeptical. Uh, we only joined the iPhone family because you know little Jay was getting her first cell phone, and uh, <laughs> we, we were they Android had a, before they that. had a. A Buy deal. one, get one. And my phone at the time was had a broken screen. So mm-hmm. I took a, one A lot for the of reasons. Team. Yeah, a lot of reasons to keep in that. So anyways. Oh, I still remember because I loved my Samsung phone it, before right. that. And yeah. if the screen hadn't been broken, I would have still had, had that it. phone for still a long time. Yeah. <laughs> anyways. Oh, I'm sorry. Phone uh, Beyond phones, we have no more left tackle right now. Starter or really backup in my mind. I mean, Austin Richards is not the guy. No Chuma Dogi, still a free agent. That's it. So t- left tackle. We just, you know, Ty- Tyler Biotis at center. Brock Hoffman stepping up right now, right now for that. And right now it looks like if we were go, if we were to go play a game today, I think it would be, you know, it would be Brock Hoffman at center. It would be T.J. Bass at left guard. It would be left tackle. It would be Tyler Smith, which is in a way kind of just weakening our entire. Even though he's good, he'd be better at guard. We better forget. A, we, we, you know, when we draft someone. Put them either at set, either draft a center guard type guy, but center first there, or grab a tackle. And then you got to grab somebody. There's no tackles left in free agency that can really be starters in the left in the left side. So that's gone. So we might have to just draft the guy. But there's still a couple centers around floating around and guards that can play. So let's start looking there and pick up a free agent, or else we got two gaping holes on this on this offensive line. And then after a draft, we're still gonna have a huge gaping hole. I know you can laugh, but right now it feels like we're getting fucked. By the Joneses. Anyways, the uh, when it comes to uh, Tyron Smith, he's uh, gone. He's jetted to the New York Jets. And, you know, we heard his... Fi- Hopefully, these are the final comments we got to hear about him. But let's talk about his good friend, Mr. Zach Martin. Congratulations, to Zach Martin. Big Zach. Gob. Whatever his nicknames are. Zach Martin today announced the birth of his baby boy. Aww. Hudson Gage Martin. Congratulations to the Martin family. Yes. A lot of babies in Dallas. A lot of babies the last year, basically, right? A little less than a year. It's been like 10 babies born on the team and coaches and others. Busy. Yeah, man, busy, busy. They should be getting busier on the goddamn football field, winning some games. Anyway, anyways, anyways. Eric Hendricks, it was for some reason we knew he was number 50 last week, but for some reason today the Cowboys verified it and, you know, Kind of made it official. It yeah, I guess. Eric Hendricks chosen and sticking with number fifty, as he had it last week. What well, another jersey changed though? Number thirty six. Remember, you used to wear that jersey, yeah, the Jeff Heath jersey. Yeah, no, he was thirty eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, all right, right. Sheldrick Redwine, our safety. He's a practice squad safety. He was number thirty six. Now he switched to number twenty. 
So a $20 Tony Pollard holler is now a, a $20 Sheldrick Red Wine holler. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of kills that Wonderful. little flow right there. Red Wine 20. Red Wine 20. Remind me if we keep this. I, I don't know if he's going to stay on the team or not, but right now it's a Sheldrick Red Wine $20 holler. <laughs> hey, listen. This is the way shit can hey. happen sometimes. What can I do about it? <laughs> I, I guess not every player can have such a, a nice name that goes with uh, uh, Sheldrick Wet Red Wine twenty dollar holler in the house. Remind me on this. We got to practice when it, when it does happen. It just flows off the tongue. <laughs> just Sheldrick Red Wine. Anyway. Anyways, oh. clown show clowning around. Why? Because they don't know how to spend and budget their checkbook and their balance their their checkbook. Why? When you look at the most expenses, expensive offenses, not teams, expensive offenses from 2024, mm-hmm. right now with Dak and his huge contract, the Browns are number one with Deshaun Watson's bigger contract, $188.8 million offense. Every okay. offensive player added up $188.8 million for the Browns. Number two, $178.1 million for the Rams. Number three, it drops $20 million, $158 million for the Cowboys. We spend the third most on offense in the NFL. Uh, the Chiefs are right behind us at 152.8 million on offense and the Broncos are fifth, which is really embarrassing. 151.1 well, we know million why. dollars. Yeah. They're paying the, the 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 contract for Russell Wilson while he's playing for one one and a half million dollars for the for the Steelers. When they play each other, it's like they're paying him a lot of money to play against themselves. <laughs> it's just crazy. Anyways I can't wait to see that. Yeah. So we spend, we're spending the third most, right now, we're spending the third most money on offense. And you can blame Dak Prescott. I would blame the Cowboy front office. I would blame Stephen Jones first and foremost, Jerry right behind him. Why? Because, listen, plain and simple, they have not restructured Dak's contract yet. They haven't hit that restructure button. They haven't got the extension. So that means Dak is sitting at almost $60 million. That's why it's so much. You take that down and take it down. A, if you take off $25 million, we're going. We're like now. We're spending maybe a top twelve, top fifteen offense now. Spending what? That makes more sense. You know why it makes sense when you think about it like this? We're still paying six million on Zeke's contract, but we don't have a starting running back. Truly, we have Rico Dowdle. So that's another new hole we got open with no Tony Pollard. Center, no one there. Brock Hoffman, undrafted last year. Mm-hmm. So Tyler Biotis to Washington, right? Starting left tackle gone, right? When Tyler and, and Tyron Smith, and if Tyler Smith moves to left tackle, then we have no left guard. So, uh, no third receiver, as we knew with, with Gallup being gone. A lot of holes on offense. A lot of money's getting saved. A lot of money getting moved around and stuff. But Cowboys, we you know, we're still spending a shit ton of money, and we have five holes still open on our starting offensive situation on our starting offensive team. This is embarrassing. This is this is embarrassing. This is bad. And to me. The Cowboys' place on this list is not due to the Dak Prescott's contract or the contracts on our team. It is due to the incompetence of this front office, the way they handle contracts, and the way they handled, yes, the way they handled Dak Prescott's contract. Not just now, but in, in the past. That's why we're here now. You guys feel me? Oh, yeah. So that's, you know... Obviously, an issue with his front office is never going to go away. Even when Jerry goes, you got Steven right behind him. And he knows he's going to do things even cheaper. I would say he, he mm. learned from Papa. Yeah, he learned from Papa Jones. In certain ways. Papa Jerry there. So, anyways, uh, you know, Tyron Smith, like I said, one of the holes in our, in our offensive line. You know, obviously left tackle currently, depending on what we do with, with Tyler Smith. Do we go guard or tackle with planning where we move him? Don't know yet. But I do know this. When it comes to the draft, and, 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 and as we finish up this stream here, and I told you guys it was a quickie. <laughs> as we finish up this stream tonight, I want to I want to make sure I uh, go over a couple of things that Will McClay is probably looking at right now when it comes to our draft picks and stuff. So mm-hmm. when it comes to the tackle, I announced some of these tackles a couple of days ago. But Joe Alt right now from Notre Dame, and it's important to note there because he's gonna he's a guy that just had uh, their pro day. In, in Notre Dame. Uh, so Joe Alt, offensive tackle, they're projecting him to be a, about a seventh pick in this draft. So that's not 24th, right? You got Olu Fashanu from Penn State. He's supposed to be the second best tackle. He's looked at about an 11th 
uh, uh, you get in drafted in the 11th, 12th, or 13th spot. In around the 13th or 14th spot, you got J.C. Latham from Alabama. In about the 14th spot, 15th spot, you got Troy Fatuanu from Washington. 15th, 16th spot, you got Talisi Fuaga from Oregon State. So you see a lot of these guys getting getting drafted. A lot of these tackles going after the seventh, the seventh seat, the seventh uh, pick. You see the 11th, 13th, 14th, 15th coming right off the board. A lot of tackles. 21st, it jumps after Fuaga. The 21st, we have 20, 21st pick there. Amarius Mims from Georgia. Then you have Tyler Guyton. 22nd pick there, 22nd, 23rd. Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, a guy the Cowboys are, are bringing in for a top visit. He's ranked right around where the Cowboys pick. And then Jordan Morgan at around 31, where the Cowboys could trade down if they really wanted to, maybe add a third rounder. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, they can, uh, you know, maybe make a move. He's from Arizona. He's a guy the Cowboys do like. He's looked around the 31st, 30, 32nd, 33rd pick in the draft. Then you go into the second round, guys. A lot of second rounders. 36, 35th, 36. Kingsley Samuata from BYU. Then it goes all the way. Then you got to draft in the 60 to 68th range with Kieran Amagadi from Yale. Mm-hmm. Patrick Paul in the 70th spot there from Houston. The 75th spot, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame. So those are the top tackles in the first two rounds of the draft. The Cowboys have scheduled some 30 day visits, right? Um, uh, two linebackers, we talked about that. Uh, a quarterback, I think. I don't, I don't know. We have a quarterback, I forgot. But the Cowboys also scheduled a 30-day pre-draft visit with Georgia State offensive tackle Travis Glover, who, as you can see, is not on this list. So this is a guy that the Cowboys will draft. If they draft tra- Travis Glover, he'll be a third-rounder or later kind of guy. Okay. Now, Temple linebacker Jordan M- McGee has a top 30 visit schedule right now with the Houston Texans. And the Dallas Cowboys. So a third linebacker for the Cowboys has been put on this uh, on this top 30 visit list here. And then a cornerback. University of what? Northern Tennessee, I think. Uh, cornerback John Davis Jr. has been invited to the Cowboys uh, local pro day. Which I think, is that, a, is that because he's a, I think he's a, a regional guy. So he comes in. It's not really a top 30 visit. He's, he's a regional. A local, guy? You know, a local visit. That's a free kind of check-in for us. But invited to the Cowboys local pro day, which, you know, SMU and other colleges in the area and guys that were born in the area can come and check out, you know, Cowboys can have you come in there and it doesn't count against your top 30. You only get 30 guys on that on that visit, unless it's your locals that come in there and can do it. And he's one of the guys, John Davis Jr., cornerback from UNT. So uh, let me shout some out. names there. But first, yes, 12th man off the grid. Thank you so much. 12th man off the grid, Alaska, with a $2 holler. And, uh, yeah, well, we'll go ahead and take a little quick interlude to touch on your comment here saying, what do you think about Mike Tyson, MCF? Um, I'm assuming you specifically mean the whole Mike Tyson and Logan Jake Paul, Paul, Jake no, Paul, whichever, Jake Paul, I don't, Paul. whichever one of the Pauls. I can never fucking remember. I don't think it matters, okay? The point is, I think it is funny as heck. I am very excited. I can't wait to see even Mike Tyson's old ass. Uh, lay the smack down on whichever Paul brother it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that Mike Tyson as a 75-year-old grandpa could probably still kick more ass than any of us on our best day. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you, I have not fallen for any of the stupid Jake Paul, Logan Paul, like, you know, whichever one of those things. But even I have to admit, I'm going to have a timer set or an alarm set. <laughs> We're gonna have like the pay per view ready to go. Yeah, whatever we're probably, it is, we're probably going live that night. We're watching. It. I I listen. I grew up with Mike Tyson. Yeah, watching Mike Tyson, one of the greatest boxers I've ever seen. And I I'm I am not. I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying I'm excited, but I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely gonna watch. Plus, we have Netflix, so we already have the option to see it. So yeah, you bet your buddy, your butt, we're gonna be watching this. So yeah, I. I yeah, and I, I know. I love Mike Tyson though. Mike that Tyson, was, yeah, Mike Tyson, really one of the joke there, Mike Tyson, step. one of the uh, what, Mike Tyson, one of the best boxers I've ever seen box. But yeah, even like you said, even if he was seventy five, he'd probably kick Logan Paul's ass or Jake Paul, whichever, whichever, uh, Paul. Not, whichever yeah, whichever Paul. So we got you on the board, twelfth man off Great Alaska. Appreciate you, go Cowboys. And uh, hey, listen, I want. I'm saying go Mike Tyson. That's going to be at AT and T Stadium in uh, 
in uh you know Jerry's Jerry world there. So Jerry Jones likes likes this boxing this uh this boxing match yeah. as well. And, and by the way, before you get to it, baby, since we are getting towards the end of the stream, let me remind everybody to take a second to hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You guys can follow us anywhere and everywhere at my Cowboys family. Hop in the Discord, of course. The link is down below in the description box. Uh, and yeah, it was yeah, it's uh, Paul Pierce, <laughs> Tyro Church said, uh, Chris Paul. Right, we <laughs> have the names uh, on us here. The Paul Walker, right? <laughs> uh, return from the dead to to come and uh, box Mike Tyson. <laughs> I see Brandon J. Also, I saw the message he left uh, backstage. He said the Giants agree to terms with Matt Nelson. There you go. They got Matt Nelson, mm. but I, they don't. He don't worry me. So what are the Cowboys doing now with Will McClay? Kind of you know, kind of looking at some of these prospects, a tackle, whatever it may be. Well, some of the coaches are going out there, guys, and checking out some of these pro days uh, for these for these colleges. And the the guy who kind of uh, is kind of leading the way, I'm going to say, is kind of I guess you could say is a little bit surprising that it is Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy, guys, he's kind of at all of these. Uh, not all every single one of these, but you can see by our thumbnail. Why would it surprise you when well, well, our uh, Dallas Cowboys are clearly only drafting players, and McCarthy's <laughs> job is on the line? So yeah, this yeah, guy's well, gonna be at every free well, because, pro day. well, because he had said he was gonna be, you know, doing a lot of installation stuff. He's not gonna be at a lot of the, He's not gonna be at the scouting combine. He probably won't make a lot of the uh, pro days. But now he's really out there at a lot of these places. And you know, when you look at the thumbnail, look at the top right. Can't be all over the place. We talked about this the other night. That's offensive coordinator um, Schottenheimer, mm-hmm. who's over there talking with the Texas Longhorn coach, Steve Scar- Scarsazian. So, you know, the Cowboys are looking at, of course, Jonathan Brooks mm-hmm. and other a bunch of other guys in Texas. So some Mike defense, Aldana some, did want to know. Some defensive guys, too, in Texas. Go ahead. Sorry about that, but it seems like JPJ is, like, slowly falling in the draft a little bit. I don't know about that 100%. I just, the other night we did discuss that a lot of people are saying that he'll be there for the Cowboys. I really like, he's like the best center in the league uh, in this draft. He can also play guard. So that versatility with the ability to play center to me is the guy the Cowboys should go after. But then we have no tackle. And that's a bigger, that could be a bigger worry. So anyway, so, but we'll see how that, again, we still got some, that's why I don't really dive too much into the draft stuff because so many things so changes. Much. Between now and next week, it'll be a whole different situation. But mm. yes, yeah, so when you talk about the draft, you see our coaches there. You see, you see Schottenheimer there with uh, with in Texas. You see Mike McCarthy was in Alabama, right? But he also was that was that was a couple days ago. Where was he the last couple of days? The last two days. Well, yesterday he was in Notre Dame. Like I said, Notre Dame football is having their had their pro day yesterday. They had five Senior Bowl alums working uh, working there out there, as well as a potential top ten pick, as I discussed already, offensive tackle. Joe Alt, who might be the number one tackle prospect in this draft from Notre Dame. Who was there from us? Mike McCarthy. The big man was in person there for the, from the Cowboys. Of course, Dan Quinn following along as the, the coach of the commanders. He was there. Those are some of the head coaches that were in attendance. GMs that were there. Brian Gutenhurst from the Packers. Adam Peters from the commanders. And Will McClay from the Cowboys. Ooh. So Will McClay and Mike McCarthy both showing up and ready to to kind of analyze some of these Notre Dame players. And I'm thinking, you know, Joe Alt and a couple others may be some of the guys they're keeping an eye on. But there's a, a long list of guys that Will McClay and Mike McCarthy may be looking at here. First off, I don't think it's going to be quarterback because multiple scouts have texted and said that quarterback Sam Hartman hasn't been impressive with his overall throwing session. But I don't know if the Cowboys... That he hasn't? He has been. He has oh, been. Oh, he has yeah. been. Okay, he's that's why I wanted to quit. He's been impressive in his overall throwing sessions. But again, Sam Hartman from Notre Dame, not going to be a first rounder in my opinion there, I don't think. So Cowboys, again, having McCarthy there and Will McClay there, you know, to me, some of the best prospects in this draft from Notre Dame. Joe Alt, offensive tackle. Also Blake Fisher, who could be a later kind of guy in the, maybe the second round. Also Notre Dame. You got Audric Estimi, a running back from Notre Dame. You got Cam Hart, a cornerback from Notre Dame. You got Javante Jean Baptiste, defensive edge rusher from Notre Dame, and linebacker Marist Lufau. So he's also a linebacker from Notre Dame. These guys are all being watched by the Cowboys, by Mike McCarthy, by Will McClay at this Notre Dame little get together here. So that's one of the places the Cowboys went to. Another place the Cowboys went, and this was, uh, you know. With Mike McCarthy attending again. This was today. Went to the pro day of Michigan. 
Now, remember, what were our first two picks last year? Mozzie Smith from Michigan and Luke Schoonmaker from Michigan. Hmm. So now we're visiting Michigan one more time. And, again, I don't know if uh, Will McClay was there, but I'm positive Mike McCarthy was there. Mike McCarthy that was there watching. Was, they had a record 18 combine invites, invitees when it comes to this. The biggest NFL turnout for a pro day was at the Michigan University of Michigan uh, pro day today. And, you know, I go through the list of guys that were there. Um, current Chargers coach Jim Harbaugh, Jesse Minter, Ben Herbert. Um, when it comes to head coaches, they had the Bears, Chargers, Dolphins, Patriots, Steelers, Commanders, and the Cowboys head coach was there, Mike McCarthy. When it comes to GMs, there were nine different teams that had GMs. Bears, Broncos, Dolphins, Patriots, Giants, Steelers, Niners, Commanders, and the Cowboys. And I'm going to assume GM means, in this case, Will McClay was there. So, again, the Cowboys had the full group out here for Notre Dame and for Michigan checking out and scouting out these players. All right. M- so, so maybe we can start to see, you know, at least where some of our heavier interest lies, right? Yeah. So, or, you know, maybe one of these two schools is going to turn out to be the next uh, Boise State. Well, Michigan seems to be that one, unfortunately. We, True. We don't like we, we've had a good chunk of Michigan players throughout the last handful of years. Yeah, so, so. when I look at McCarthy being at the specific Michigan Pro Day today. What are some of the, you know, we talked about Mozzie and Luke Schoonmaker last year. Mm -hmm. What about this year? What are some guys the Cowboys might be looking at? And there's always that J.J. McCarthy, who, by the way, is a quarterback. And he had a fantastic throwing session. So unless the Cowboys are blown away by him, they want to go draft the quarterback early. Well, I guess guess he may, I don't think he's going to even be there. So uh, then you have Junior Colston, a linebacker. Cowboys always looking at linebackers. They got Roman Wilson, a wide receiver, over there in Notre Dame. I'm sorry, in uh, Michigan that they might be looking at. Mike Sanstrill. Sanstrill. He's a cornerback for Notre Dame. Notre Dame's defensive tackle, Chris Jenkins. You have their guard, Zach Zinter, and running back, Blake Corum. Those are the guys that may interest the Cowboys. You got Will McClay, Mike McCarthy there. You know, sitting there and checking it out. And that is the updates on our Dallas Cowboys from not just today, but the last two days. Well, I'm here. I'm here to hear a couple comments from the family in the chat before we rock on out of here for the night. So let me see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see. Uh, Tyron Church said the running backs and linebackers from Michigan are good with me. There you go. There's a couple. A couple we just mentioned right there. Uh, let me see. Hold on. There, Rodriguez said MCF. If Dak would have named his baby after Jerry Jones's family. Just like Romo, maybe he could have gotten a new contract. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, so Mike got Donna rolling back saying that the news as far as like JPJ just came across the wire today. Mm. So yeah, we got to keep an eye on that. That could go up and down between now and then. But if he drops, I mean, do you get him in the second round? Try to hope from there, or you know, is he a guy that's going to be just you can trade back a couple spots and then add a third rounder and still get someone like JPJ. Um, Interesting. We'll keep an eye on that. And 12-man off grid, yeah. Um, I don't know about the Seahawks going to the Super Bowl next year, but I guess keep on dreaming. <laughs> Seahawks are, you know, they are a team that, uh, you know, trying to step maybe into the playoffs again. Well, they're having they, trouble. they just trying to figure out what the heck they're doing now that uh, Pete Carroll is Yeah, they have so, new, whole, they're gonna, a lot of other They're going to be defensive base from Mike McDonald, who's now formerly the Raven. The defensive coordinator, fantastic. Now he's the head coach there in Seattle, and they're yeah. going to focus on defense. So, uh, and uh, the, the final point I'll touch on here, Tyron just said, I'm here that the Cowboys are looking to trade back from the 24th pick to uh, later in the first round. And that, that would, would be, be a huge mistake. Uh, really? A huge, yeah, I'm sorry. I disagree. <sighs> Go ahead. Here's your, here's. Okay. I know maybe some people are looking at it as, okay, yeah, we need more draft picks. What do you think? is going to happen to the quality of those draft picks when we already barely have any. Like, if we, I don't know, I feel like we are asking for trouble. I don't think it'll affect us as much in the first round, just being real, because it seems like we're going to go O-line, and I don't think the difference from 24 to, like, whatever would be all that great to, you know, warrant, you know, a whole derailing of the draft. You get what I'm trying to say? But those the picks that come after are the ones that concern me. See, I'm thinking that no matter what, the Cowboys, I think, listen, here's the thing, baby. If they got JPJ dropping, Mm -hmm. and there's a couple of these tackles I mentioned that are in there, then why not just drop back to the 31st spot? 
pick and get one of those two, a center or a tackle that you're going to want anyways. One of them would drop to you. You grab that one and you just picked up a fourth rounder or you picked up a third rounder, right? You drop back six spots or something like this, eight spots. So if you can get your guy still, one of your one of your guys that you have in that range of 30-ish or whatever, you can, I would say, why not try to pick up maybe a starting guard, and I mean a starting tackle and a starting center in the second round. When you have an extra pick, now you can pick up a linebacker or a receiver or running back in that third or fourth round. That's all. I think it helps the overall draft. If you go back a couple spots in the first round, get your guy, and then you add another third or fourth, you know, a, a good third round pick yeah. or fourth round pick in there. So, yeah, and Tyrone sense. Church agrees with you. There yeah, you go. That's, that's what I think. That's what I think. Anyways, on that <laughs> note, it is time to wrap it up for the night. It is a quickie, a cowboy quickie for you for your reason. We'll be back again. Uh, we should be back tomorrow. Should, because if there's uh, the news is, is uh, the news is like today, Probably will just wrap it up on Sunday, guys. But if there is any big news, any big moves, any guys we lose or pick up. Yeah, we things will, worth discussing. Yeah, we'll yes. definitely be live again of tomorrow course, night. Of course, And wrap it up on Sunday over the weekend, even if they have to be quickies right now, right? Either way, we appreciate everybody here dropping the knowledge, dropping the love. Got to give the big shout-out to the sponsor of the week and the Cash App King, Dead Fool. Much love to you. Mr. Markov Seppian still hanging on, 38 points on the stream, boss. The gifting champion of, is of course the great jason renfro but the leader is skeptical fan in first place with scorpio skeptical. yes skeptical in first on the gifting side scorpio in second place with one gifting much love for the gifting uh family there and of course when you look at the overall board again like i said there was a uh, uh of course deadpool is the overall guy here and when it comes to the cash app side he's the king of the cash app but the skeptical leader fan said draft a new owner yeah <laughs> i wish i wish but the leader right now over Dead Fool on the sponsor of the week and the Cash App King is this guy, Mr. McLovin. Appreciate McLovin in the house. Uh, I know he's a Dolphin fan, but he's also an MCF fan, so we appreciate you, brother. And he is currently on the top spot. Not by much, but in the top spot on both the Cash App and the overall board. Also, want to make sure I shout out those that dropped the love here tonight. Big D back in that Navy Blue Crew membership side of things. Skeptical fan dropping in the PayPal, dropping the Super Chat, dropping some gifted memberships in first place there. We got Drain Star with the pre-stream DAC drop. We got Scorpio gifting membership, making sure our thing works. Thank you. And 12th Man Off the Grid stopping in, saying hi and dropping a little love. Appreciate you in the Mike Tyson question. We'll see everybody a little later on After Dark, possibly. I'm not sure if I'll be on there tonight or on another channel tonight, chilling, maybe LCs or something. But either way, We'll see you back here, hopefully tomorrow. If not, definitely Sunday. And before we say goodnight, baby, let's do the shout-outs in the chat. Of course. So maybe we a have comment or two. 12th Man Off Grid, Roland Rodriguez, Stephen White, Matt Batten, Brandon J, Skeptical Fan, Tyrone Church, much love. We have, who else is here? Jason Kojak. Da, 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 da. Scorpio representing. Glad to f- see you're feeling better. I see Griff one eighty one, who by the way said moving on from Tyron in a, da- a draft deep at tackle is a prudent move. We love Tyron, but continuing to roll the dice is not smart, and I trust they have a plan for the O line. Oh, so hey, yeah. like I said, there's ever a time to do it. It'd be now better to do it before it becomes a liability. It's just a little a frustrating knowing that we had multiple options, like not even drafting his future replacement, just keeping somebody here to help bridge that gap in the meantime. But hey. We talked about that. Yeah, I mean, I think quite that, a bit here. You know, I mean, again, I think that there is a lot, a lot of a lot of good tackles, but they're all gone. Like the top seven, eight tackles are gone before we pick. So now we're getting a later, yeah. a later guy, and you know, we wait to the second round. We're getting you know a top twenty tackle now. It's <laughs> not that great anymore. But yeah, lost in translation. Dwayne Broussard, the top dog. C Bass, apocalyptic cowboy, revelation journalist, Juan Carlos. We have doo, 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 who else? MD, Dustin Roberts. Da, 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 da. I think yeah, at least for me, that's as far back as I can go. So huge shout out to everybody here. Appreciate you all. But baby, there's a reason we do what we do here at my Cowboys family, Tell and why. I believe. Tell them. It's because of that navy blue. You know it. That silver too. Hell yeah. And that star over everything. Always, guys. Win 
Lose or draw, good, bad, or ugly here on MCF. We always rock, rep and rock that star over everything. And then you guys here chilling with us for another one. You can be anywhere you're here with us on My Cowboys Family. Yes, it's been almost seven years. J- July 1st is seven years right here on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Can't do this without you guys' love and support. So remember, on My Cowboys Family, never, ever forget the number one thing here now and forever. As always, go Cowboys. Let's get that six and beyond. Thank you all for dropping the knowledge in the chat. All night long. All night. And of course, the love from above. Truly humbled by the best fans of all. YouTube, you know it. As we clock out, drop out for the night, we lock and reload for another show, either tomorrow or Sunday for the for the finale of the week. Before we can uh, officially wrap it up and drop out of here for the night, baby, tell them what we got to do first. We got to drop the beat. Oh, yeah. That beat's been dropped. It's a wrap here on MCF, my Cowboys family. And we will uh, see you all back over the weekend, uh, either Saturday and Sunday or just Sunday. Either way, make sure you're all signed up to us so you know when we're going live. Guys, thank you again for chilling with us as we wrap up another two days worth of Dallas Cowboys news, info, and updates right here on another MCF Cowboys quickie chat. (laughs) Yes, Jerry, Steven, misspending, mismanaging, Tyron Smith leaving, coaches scrambling to try to fill in the many, many holes on his offense and defense in the draft. That's all we got left now. They're not going, we're not spending that cash in the free agency. You guys know the deal. We talked about it here. Leave our comments down below if, you, if you're watching this on the replay and all. And, of course, here an MCF, never forget, it's always about that navy blue, that silver, too, and that star of everything. Again, never ever forget the number one thing right here. My Cowboys family. Much love to everyone in the house rocking it with us. Guys, we can't do it without your love and support. And truly appreciate everybody hitting that like button right now. Keeping the analytics going. Hitting that like button. Hit subscribe and keeping the family growing. And of course... Hit the notification bell to all videos so you know exactly when we're going live. Follow us at all social medias, Twitter, X, at My Cowboys Family, Discord. All the information is in our description down below. Thank you all for watching. Hit that like and subscribing. We'll see you back here over the weekend. Have a great weekend yourselves. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Peace out. And never, ever forget, Go Cowboys! <laughs>